Now to our top story. When it comes to Benghazi, we may have been looking in the wrong place. That according to Dick Morris, who joins us and says the public is missing the real Benghazi talking points. Dick, it is great to have you back Thank with you. us. You you were great to, to come on with us the other day with your first column about the, uh, the Benghazi emails there. Uh, was this PR campaign part of the Obama White House or did it originate at Foggy Bottom? Well, nobody knows. Um, all we know is that what Hillary said 36 hours earlier is what Rhodes told Rice to say 36 hours later. Rhodes is White House, Hillary was state. But today's story is more important than that. All along, the Republican Party has been chasing a red herring in Congress, the talking points. You've heard that talked about endlessly, uh, with the CIA and the White House and the State Department moved back and forth. Should we put in the word terrorist or the word extremist? Should we talk about the warnings the State Department had or not? But that, those talking points didn't mention the video at all. And when Mike Morell testified before Congress, we all thought he was lying. He was telling the truth when he said that he was surprised when he heard Rice talking about the movie because he didn't know anyone was talking about the movie. Well, it turns out that there were now two sets of talking points. The one we've been chasing, which uh, was the official one, mm -hmm. and then a secret, more explosive, more extensive one that was not unearthed until Judicial Watch got a hold of that smoking gun memo. But when you look at who the memo was from and who it was to and who wrote it, you understand what was happening. The CIA was talking about the demonstration and trying to parse the blame favorably to the administration, but still parse it. But in the meantime, Rhodes in the White House was going hellbent on a set of talking points that had no basis in reality and total fiction. And speaking of those fictional talking points, Dick, you, you broke the story here uh, from your column on DickMorris.com, but on the off chance that some people missed it, let, let's go back and take a look and we'll show you the archived comments. First, what Hillary Clinton had to say about uh, that Benghazi attack. Uh, this would have been September 13th, 2012, and we'll compare that with what Ben Rhodes wrote in his email. Here is Hillary Clinton on September 13th, 2012. Let me state very clearly, and I hope it is obvious, that the United States government had absolutely nothing to do with this video. We absolutely reject its content and message. This video is disgusting and reprehensible. Uh, now we have Ben Rhodes comments from the email, quote, we've made our views on this video crystal clear. The United States government had nothing to do with it. We reject its message and its content. We find it disgusting and reprehensible, but there is absolutely no justification at all for responding to this movie with violence. Now, Dick, this stuff, I mean, I've been around politics, and I know people from time to time will borrow lines, <laughs> no, no, but this, this is, is serious public and, policy that sounds absolutely coordinated. And one issue that arises from this is in all of the subpoenas and the FOI request from Judicial Watch, we have no document that shows these talking points going from state to the White House or back and forth. So what was it, osmosis, a channeling, was it smoke signals? Uh, or are they hiding yet another email? Or could it be a situation, remember what has happened in Washington. Uh, when I first went to Congress, Peggy Noonan said, keep a diary, you can write a book. Well, then we took a look at what went on with George Stephanopoulos and his book. And of course, he could go in to a grand jury or come to a, to a legislative committee and say, no, I kept no diary. What he did was he called a confidant and dictated a diary that someone else right. wrote. Is this a situation, given Mrs. Clinton's legal training and her familiarity with scandal and congressional oversight, is it something where we go back to basics like picking up the telephone? Yeah. Well, it might, and, and it might well have been, we don't know. But the more disturbing thing is the thing I want to focus on today, which is that we have all of the investigation, all of the hearings, all of the testimony, all of the questions have been chasing a red herring, the CIA talking points. 
which while they were sanitized and expunged to make the administration look good, were fundamentally not totally inaccurate. But the White House talking points were not based on intelligence. The CIA was telling the White House this is not about a movie. And the White House was putting out talking points saying this was about a movie. And we don't know who wrote those talking points, whether it was Rhodes or someone else, and we or Hillary, and we don't know how they got it. What probably happened was at 10 p.m. the day of the attack, Hillary and Obama spoke by phone. And in that phone conversation, God knows what was said. But right after that, Hillary came out and blamed the movie. And then the next day, she gave the statement you just saw. And here are just uh, our viewers are seeing the Ben Rhodes talking points that were delivered uh, to Susan Rice. And, and again, this is not a departure. Whenever anyone is going, when I used to appear on the Sunday shows, I would sit with my staff and talk about the themes we wanted to reiterate. But again, the problem now is how profound, just to make sure we've got a clear understanding, Dick, the CIA did one thing. Uh, in terms of intelligence analysis, somehow this concoction you believe was formulated with the President and Secretary of State Clinton uh, and with the uh, State and the White House following up with points that are very similar. Which Out of it, whole okay, cloth. Just dreaming this up. There was dreaming yeah. it up. Uh, there is no evidence of any intelligence report that they got that confirmed this, suggested it, and indeed, there is evidence that the day before Susan Rice went on TV, Morell sent McDonough, the deputy chief of staff at the White House, a memo saying, we just spoke to the Libyan ambassador. We've been in touch with the Libyan president. And we can now confirm that the movie had nothing to do with it. And the next day, she's on five Sunday shows saying the movie caused it. So all the the vial that was thrown at Mike Morrell, you say he's absolved in all this. Yeah. He did everything he could. He went to the White House and said, here's what we think happened. And the White House said, yep. great, thanks. Now we're going to put it in the yeah, trash. Exactly. And and the so the question now becomes, as it always is in these, what did Obama know and when did he know it? There's only one way to resolve this, and that is Barack Obama should follow the lead of George W. Bush in releasing his daily intelligence briefing when for the days after Benghazi, when Bush was accused of not being prepared for 9-11 and not taking steps to avert it. He ordered that his daily intelligence briefings that he received for each of the days in July and August be made public. And there was one on July 21st, if memory serves, where Condi Rice advised him that there was a lot of talk about using airplanes uh, for an attack in the United States, not understanding its weapons, but right. just hijacking, and that he didn't do anything to prepare for that. Now what Obama needs to do is produce these. He has said in public that everything he said about the movie was based on an intelligence assessment. The CIA now says it was not, and there's no other agency that has stepped forward to saying it was. So unless the president has an extraterrestrial source of intelligence, and uh, you know, ESP is that, uh, how did he get this information? I believe that he never got it. I believe Hillary never got it. I think they cooked it up. Well, you take a look at the president's resume. We, we say community organizer. That's a polite way to say street agitator. And you look, and it's a serious charge, but in essence, because of domestic political concerns, they were intent on uh, agitating the so-called Arab street, prompting uh, uh, protest after the fact and saying they existed then. Here's, here's my question. No, I, I'm not sure about that. Well, I'm not sure they perhaps, tried to agitate the Arab yeah. street, but I think that what they did do is Obama looked at this attack and said, oh my God, I'm running around the country saying bin Laden's dead and Al-Qaeda's on the run. This contradicts it. Hillary looked at the attack and said, oh my God, I'm in charge of the State Department. I ignored the warnings for more guards. I ignored Stevens' request for more efforts. And I want to hide what we're doing in Benghazi in the first place, which we think is the arms deal to Syria. So they both looked at it and then they talked. And they said the only way out of this is yesterday is, is there was a demonstration in Cairo spontaneous about the movie let's pretend that Libya is the same deal but there unless they can produce a shred of evidence that this was based on any intel it's not going to work so in terms of the committee if you're Trey Gowdy you're subpoenaing telephone records from state and the White House and do you go even, given the cellular age... I would age, subpoena the daily intelligence the briefings. He'll assert executive privilege, that's, but that's the Bush let him out. 
and uh, it'll be a hard case for him to hide up. And then I think we should, uh, they should say, what was the intelligence that led Ben Rhodes to those talking points? It wasn't the CIA. The talking points the CIA did never mention the movie. Well, we are going to pursue this. We're going to have you stay with us, Dick Morris, and we're going to be joined by my old congressional colleague, Pete Hoekstra, as we drill down on the House resolution on the Benghazi Select Committee. What will be the parameters for Chairman Trey Gowdy and the members of that committee? Has the House set this up to succeed? Or within the resolution, might there be seeds of failure, at the very least difficulties? Pete Hoekstra joins us next. We invite you to stay tuned as America's Forum continues now on Newsmax TV.